Open up your Bibles to the book of First Thessalonians, and uh, we get kind of a double shot out of Thessalonians a little bit this week, because Dr. Crabb preached out of uh, chapter 3. We're going to look at chapter 4, and uh, starting in verse 10, and it says in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 10, and indeed, you do it towards all the brethren which are in... Uh, Macedonia, but we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we have commanded, that ye may walk honestly towards them or that, are, uh, that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. Now, I looked at two words in here that just have been captivating to me lately, and it's these, this word... Study, and then two. Study, two. Study, two. And I, I think a study, my mind goes right back to high school. I, you know, how many here like to study? I, you know, it's like, I, you know, Brother Aiken, he, you, know, he re, you know, that's why you have the job that you have, amen? But I think the average person doesn't necessarily like to study. Because, and, and I think it's the word. You know, it's like going to the dentist. Well, nobody necessarily likes the dentist. You like the outcome of the dentist. You go to the dentist with a toothache, and it's not necessarily a fun process, but when you leave, you're very thankful that you went. Well, it's the same thing when it comes to studying. We're going to break down a few things here and uh, look at a few passages of Scripture, but I, I want you to focus on studying. Because you have to ask yourself this question right now, how much studying am I doing in the Word of God? You know, I heard uh, Brother Wilt, I believe, said on Friday, you know, you are who you're going you, you to be in 10 years uh, based upon the friends that you have and the, the books that you read. I was listening to Dave Ramsey uh, on Saturday, or maybe it was Sunday, uh, on the radio. And he said, a lot of employees think they're something because they worked the same job for five years. And uh, because they've worked in that same field and they've worked it and worked it and worked it, then they get very upset when they get passed for the promotion. He said, you haven't gained five years of experience. You've gained one year of experience five times because you haven't added anything to your knowledge, to your study. And so I want you to think about that today when you look at your walk with God. When you come to church, when you have your devotions, whatever it may be, are you adding to yourself in the Lord? Are you allowing God to build you precept upon precept, line upon line? Because if you're not, then you're really not growing. And we get a false sense of security just by going to church. I tell our students in the homes all the time, just because you spend six months in this home doesn't mean you're going to change a lick. Your surroundings may change the way you talk, they may change the way you act. It may change the way you walk. But it doesn't necessarily change your insides. When you go back to where you were and who you're around, you're going to end up being that same person again. Because change isn't just environmental. And what I mean by that, just by coming to church without applying God's truth doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to grow in the Lord. You know, information gained is just information. But information applied is transformation. You know, if we can start applying the truths that God gives us through His Word, then that's the process through the trials, through all the things that the Lord puts us through to be conformed into the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. But if you're not studying it out, if you're not taking the time to build precept upon precept, to take that next right step, to do the work that it's going to take, and it is labor. Studying the Word of God is labor. And it's tiring because it's not like reading a book. I can read a book and have fun reading a book. But when it comes to like reading a spiritual book, when it comes to reading the Bible, there's a different thing than reading Hiker's magazine. I can read that whole magazine and not even stop. No fight, no tiredness, no nothing. But when I pick up a new book that's going to help me grow spiritually, I get five pages into it and the world's one big distraction. 
You know, I forget what I'm reading. I, this happens, the phone rings, whatever it may be. When I pick up the Word of God, it's all of a sudden boom, 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 boom. My head's a thousand different places. There's a lot of different stress going on. And it, only, it, it, it wasn't there before I started opening the Word of God. And you say, well, what's going on? Well, there's that oppression. There's that spiritual battle that's keeping you away from it. And that is a labor. You're in spiritual warfare right then and there. And that's what makes studying the Bible different. That's what makes studying the Bible tough. That's why a lot of people don't do it. They say, Brother Donnie, I ain't got time to do it. Well, make time to do it. Brother Donnie, I don't, whatever it may be, study the Bible. We're going to get into a couple other passages that are going to show why. But I looked at the word quiet. Now, I am not... Uh, I don't speak other languages. I barely speak English properly. I don't speak it properly. But I'm amazed when Pastor Kingsbury gets up and he talks through the different languages, the Hebrew and the Greek, and he gives, this is the Greek word. Well, I, I tried to memorize what this word says, and I'm not even going to try it, so I'm not going to do it. But I do want you to know when it comes to studying, you can learn the language. You may not be able to put a sentence together, I use a little uh, uh, a website I go to. It's just Blue Letter Bible. And Blue Letter Bible, I type in what I want, and it has the strong side of it, so I click on the little strongs button, and it breaks it down, and it gives, gives me the Greek word. And then it's got a little button that you push, and it'll pronounce it for you. And I imagine if I listen to it another hundred times, I will get it. You know, but this is that studying process. A lot of times you say, well, I don't speak Greek. I don't speak Aramaic, I don't speak Hebrew, I don't speak this, I don't speak that. I can't do it. Well, yeah, you can. Especially nowadays, it's easy. And I still prefer a book. I don't know what it is about a concordance. I still like to flip through pages, even though this stuff is easy. But I looked at, again, the word to be quieter, that phrase. And it's broke down, and it's one word. And it's, it's actually translated into our uh, King James Bible in... in uh, five different words. And the first one is uh, hold one's peace is how it's broke down. That's that same word as to be quiet. Holds one peace. Uh, the next word is rest. And then it's cease. And then to be quiet. Think about that when you think of the word. If we're not studying God's word, you may look at it and say, well, to be quiet. I got, you know when it said to hold one's peace? That's a little different than to be quiet. Because to be quiet to me just means to, to be there, keep your mouth closed, and just listen. But that's different when... How many of you guys have kids? How many of your children like to get the last word in? You know, they haven't quite learned to hold one's peace, right? But at the same time, how many of you are married and you're in an argument with your spouse? Have you learned to hold your peace? How many of you have ever been into a meeting at your job and the boss says something that you don't necessarily want to do and you want to come up with five different ways to do it a different way? But have you learned to hold one's peace? It's a different element than just being quiet because there's some part of us, that inner ball, that just starts to... You know, and it's like it's like a lion trying to get out of a cage, and it's, you know, it's doing everything it could do to get out of there. I mean, and you're thinking to yourself, if I say this, I know I'm going to get in trouble. I know it's not going to be good. If I, if I, and so, I mean, you're doing everything you can to keep it in, but yet it still comes out. Trying. But it says to study, to hold one's peace. Think about that. That's tough. You have to make a conscious effort to study to hold one's peace. And then, you know, it says to rest. Study to rest? Well, that sounds like it, it's a no-brainer, you know. But is it? I look across this room, and some of you are the reason why I do and why I, I'm able to do what I do. Your diligence in the Lord has been an example to me pushing me forward. I, I look across, and I never see you guys rest. Some of you are just on the go, on the go, on the go, and you're in different ministries, and I mean, you're just nonstop going. And we look at that, and it's a good thing, and we, but we need to learn to study to sometimes to take a step back. Because we can get so busy that we forget what we're doing. 
And what we're doing is trying to bring others to Christ. We're trying to teach the believers to know Christ more. At the same time, we're trying to know Christ more. We're trying to uh, uh, be a submissive uh, vessel so that he can conform us into the image of his son. But sometimes we get so busy that we need to study to do these things. And then, I like what it said, to cease. Because that's different in, in the word of rest and hold one's peace, and, but to cease. You take all these words together and you put them together, and that's what it's saying, to be quiet. But we can look at the Word of God on a surface level and take our own intellect of it without diving deep into the Word. One of the best things that I got from Mr. Currington when he was teaching me was to dissect and to define the Bible. He said, Donnie, you have to dig into the Bible. You have to dissect and define it. He said, a lot of people get caught up with the King James Bible because it's hard to read. And he said, but you should look at that sometimes like it's a privilege because it's going to make you have to dive into the Word of God. It's going to force you to have to, but if you just, again, take it with your own intellect, you're going to get a different meaning than what God's really trying to tell you. You're not going to see really what God is doing and why he's telling you to do it. You know, we get next into it, and it says, so that you study to, to be quiet and to do your own business. Now, I looked at that verse. I'm like, do my own business. Well, that's an easy one. I don't want to do anybody else's job to begin with. You know, sometimes I don't want to do mine. And so to get in to do somebody else's work and to do it, but that's not necessarily what it's talking about when it comes to just to do what you were told to do or to do your job. There's a handful of different words that it uses to describe that the King James Bible uses this exact same word to describe. And one is his own, their own, privately, apart, your own, his own. So to study to do your own, own business. I was looking at a couple verses, and it says in uh, Mark 7, 33, and he took him aside from the multitudes and put his finger on his ears, and he spit and touched his tongue. And I got to look at that now. It says, study to do your own business. What does that really mean? Well, what has God called you to do? I, I look at our, our brethren and we're so busy, even in this own church, focused on what somebody else is doing. Focused on this and that and another thing, when realistically, you're not part of the problem nor part of the solution. It has nothing to do with you. But yet we focus on these things, and I do myself. But if we would just study to do our own business, we would get so much more accomplished. You would be focused on the task at hand with which God has called you to do. You know, if that's be a mother, well, be a mother to your children. If that's be a husband, be a husband to your family. If that's be a bus worker, be a bus worker to your route. If that, whatever it may be, you can look through the different areas of what it is, but study to do your own business versus focusing on everybody else's. Because what we do is we get distracted. Because if you're like me, I'm a problem solver. And so I see a problem, I want to solve it. It may not have anything to do with me, but again, I have to study to be quiet, right? I have to study to hold my own peace, but I, you know, I want to give my two cents. Hey, if you would just do it this way and this way, it'd be so much more productive and this, that, and another thing. But at the same time, over here, what I'm supposed to be doing is getting neglected. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do over here because I'm, I'm too busy giving the two cents, not holding my peace, and I'm mingling in your business. You know what I mean? And if we would just focus on that, one, as a body of believers, there'd be a whole lot less friction. There'd be a whole lot less little spats here and there. And we would learn to come alongside each other as the Lord leads and lift each other up versus at times breaking each other down. Because you don't see the big picture of their business. You see through the little window of our own eyes. That's how we see it. But the big picture of their business, that may be the plan to get it where it needs to be. They may be right where the, they want to be. They may be right where the Lord has them at that particular time, but you don't see it that way. 
And so, again, but that's something obviously, you know, the Bible says that we need to study not to do these things. Not to get involved with somebody else's, but study to do our own. It means take some time. It's going to be laborious at times. It's going to be tough at times. Because our natural desire is to do these things. And then it goes on to say, with your own hands. And um, as I looked up the definition, with our own hands, and I could break down every word, but basically it's getting in to commit. Commit to what you're doing. Do what you're doing fully under the Lord. Commit all that you can commit into that area and do it. You don't have to get five other opinions. You don't have to get 37 different things. Just study to do it. Study to dive into it. I love what the Bible talks about in this area where he says study to. Because obviously we all struggle in different areas of our life. And I've got a multitude of struggles. And, uh, but if we're not taking the time to study to... Um, why don't you guys flip over? This is a very familiar passage of Scripture. Flip over to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. I imagine the majority of us in here could probably quote this passage of Scripture. It says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to show thyself approved. I would have to look at that when it says about being approved. Well, study to show thyself approved. Looking at the words and looking how they're broke down, if I'm not studying to be quiet, if I'm not studying to do my own business, if I'm not studying to do what God's called me to do, am I really going to be approved unto the Lord? Now, I want you guys to think about this when you study. There's something that you guys should always keep in mind that took me a while to to grasp, and really Brother Burks helped me with this more than any other individual. He said, Donnie, when you study the Bible, it's not about you. And I said, well, what do you mean about that? He says, it's not about you. I'm not, I didn't quite get it. I said, well, I'm, I'm studying the Bible. I want to go closer to the Lord. He said, yeah, but that book is written about Jesus Christ. It's not written about Donnie Barnes. It's written about Jesus Christ. He said, so you should say and look at it. When you go into the Bible, you should be asking the Father to reveal His Son to you in every passage of every scripture when you study the Word of God. Yes, you should be looking for that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, you should be looking to gather the different information that God gives, but ultimately, it's for the glory of God. And through His glory and through His teaching, He's going to perfect me. It's not, no matter what I do, no matter how much work I put into it, He's doing the perfecting. But if we're neglecting Him through His scriptures, it's self-glorification. Again, it's knowledge. Um, We have a lot of students come through our homes. A lot of students have come from great churches that have great families that have been uh, in the Word of God their whole life and yet fall into serious addictions. Why is that? Some of you may be sitting in here right now and know, hey, wait a minute, I have a struggle. I have a big issue. Some of you may say, well, I don't necessarily have a big issue, but I have, a, I have issues. We all have issues, right? Jesus says in John eight thirty one and 32, Jesus said unto those Jews which believe into him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth will what? It'll make you free, right? And so I was, uh, had a lesson, I think it was last week, that I talked to the men, and we were talking about this continuing. Do you know that if you just continue to study the Bible, searching for Christ and to build that relationship with him, if ye continue... Think of all the different things that Christ talks about the disciples. You know, if, if, if you don't learn to hate your, your family, your, what, you know, how it goes all the way through that, then you cannot be my disciple. Well, there's something along the lines of continuing that teach you to deny yourself, that teaches you to put Christ at the focus. There's something about just continuing in the Word of God, continuing in church, continuing in the study of it, 
But let me just say, this is not continuing. It's not. You can go to all the church you want to go to. But until you apply, until you start living what pastor preaches from this pulpit every week, week in and week out, it's not going to happen. I was thinking about this quizzing myself. And I know on Wednesdays he's preaching through um, the armor of God. And so it's pretty easy to say, well, what did he teach on last Wednesday he was here? Well, the armor of God. But can anybody here tell me what pastor preached on three months ago on Wednesday night? I don't know. I have no idea. I couldn't tell you what he preached on three Wednesdays ago or three Sundays ago off the top of my head. But can I ask you this? How many of you have taken his message, studied it, applied it, and that truth is now perfecting your life? You don't necessarily have to know what the title of the message was. You don't necessarily have to know the three points of the message. But what you do know is what the Holy Spirit convicted you of. You studied that out. You applied it to your life. But again, like I said, just sitting in church, if you're not doing that, well, we're going to have the same start struggles. We're going to have repetitive struggles because we're not applying the Word of God. Because again, I don't remember what he preached last year this time. I don't know. And so to just come to church and not study the Word of God... We're going to be no better off in that end of it. Now, praise the Lord that his word will not return void. I mean, so faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so again, don't stop coming to church. Keep coming to church. That's the first step. Keep coming to church. Keep coming to church. Keep coming to church. Keep coming to church. Keep, to church. Keep having your devotions. Keep worshiping God. Keep in your Bible. Keep in prayer. Keep your focus on the heavenlies. Keep your focus on others. Start to love others. Start to give of others. As you start to study the Word of God, these things will start to come naturally. You'll all of a sudden stop focusing on yourself. We tell that to our students all the time. Hey, it's not about you. One of the things that we encourage them to do every day is there's a little area in the uh, It's Personal Daily Journal that says encouragement. And we ask them, hey, why don't you ask the Lord specifically who would he, who would he have you to encourage today? Because what that does is it gets your focus off of you. I don't know about you, but if you're having a bad day and you're alone by yourself, normally that day doesn't necessarily just get better. You know what I mean? We get wrapped up in this head of ours. And we start contemplating, you know, bills are due, this is going on, and all the weight of the world. But if we can get our focus off ourselves and start focusing on others, You'll start to see the mind of Christ start working, start to go through, start to flow through. But this isn't going to happen if you're not studying the Word of God. It's just not. Ultimately, <coughs> as you look through studying the Word of God, first, where do I start? I'm surprised how many people don't know what to do, where to go. How, Brother Barnes, how do I study my Bible? What, where do you go to? What, what, what? I'm struggling here, and I don't know what to do. I'm trying to figure this out. I don't know where to go. And I would only imagine that if the majority of the students that come through our home then have that issue, and they've, you know, came through good homes, and a good portion of our, our church family would have that same problem. Where do I go? What do I do? Now, I'm going to give you what I do. And again, this is Wednesday night Bible study. And so I'm going to just kind of walk you through how I study the Bible and hope that it'll help you learn to study the Bible. Now, when I start the Bible, like say, Beginning of the year, I start in Genesis. Well, I study through Genesis. Now, this year I started in the New Testament, and so I started in Matthew. So, 
January 1st, I read Matthew 1. I had my devotions out of Matthew 1. I studied Matthew 1. As you go down through the year, you get to where you're at. And what I tell the men and I tell our girls, don't manipulate the Bible to get the answer you're looking for. God knows where you're at. So I'm struggling in my marriage. Well, then if you're in Mark, God could help you through Mark. If you're struggling with your boss at work and you're in James, God could help you through James. You don't need to go to Ephesians every time your marriage is struggling. God knows where you're at. Don't manipulate the Word of God. Remember that off the get-go. The Lord knows. And every single jot, every single I, every single T speaks of Jesus. And so to start off, if you don't know where to start, just start. Just start. You know, open up, turn to the book of Matthew, turn to Genesis, just start. And again, this is what I do. I'm not telling this is what's going to be what you do. This is just what I do. And then, what's next? So, I'm in the Word of God. I'm working through it. Now, there's a couple of different things that I do. Now, the, my devotions aren't my study. And that's something that people don't necessarily separate sometimes. My devotion time isn't about gaining some intellectual knowledge about the Scriptures. It's about my devotion unto the Lord. And so you have to set apart a time where you're studying the Word of God. Because necessarily studying isn't always worship. And so if you're wrapping the two in one, you're missing something very important. And so when it comes to the studying of the Word of God, like I said, I love that blue letter Bible. And some people use eSword. And there's, I mean, there's a thousand different apps. But I've just found that blue letter Bible works good for me. And above all, I love an 1828 big book, big old green thing that it will kill anything in your house and once, you know. And then um, I love just a concordance, something about flipping through the papers. And so as I'm reading it, I'm asking the Lord to reveal His Son, is it, is it a topical study or am I studying expositorily? And that's for you to decide in that particular study. Uh, lately I've been going through the Word of God verse by verse, studying it verse by verse. And so first I look at it, and I've got to know the chapter before, and I've got to know the chapter after. Not necessarily verbatim, not necessarily to quote, but you want to know it in its context. You want to know what it's saying. And so I read those three chapters. So the, ver the chapter before, the chapter I'm in, the chapter I'm after. And then I start and break it up into a, a word study. And so, again, I'll, in Blue Letter Bible, it's got a little thing that says word search. So I'll type in the word study. And then it'll break up. It'll give me the, the definition. It'll give me all the different words that it's used in translation. And then it'll give me every single verse in the Bible that uses that word. Because there's no better um, uh, teacher of the Word of God than the Word of God. You know, so if you can use the Word of God and cross-reference it to teach you what's going on, that's the best way to do it. And uh, so then I start looking at all these different verses. And then maybe a word pops up I don't know. I may not understand. Well, again, I'll do a word search. I'll go with the 1828. I'll open it up. I'll pull up a concordance. I'll open it up. And I'll read what it says. I want to know the verse that God is telling me. I want to know what that word means specifically. And now, for me, I have journals. I have asked my wife. I've just got a thousand different journals. I've got one journal for my devotions. I got one journal that I use just to pray for the needs of our homes. I got another journal that I use just for my studies. And that's just what works for me. I like to write it down because I get so distracted. As I'm writing it, it seems to keep my focus. And it's a little bit more when it comes to the work, but it helps me keep my focus. So I write the word down. I write the definition down. I write the context of what it is going down. I write down all the different verses that kind of go along with it. And then I just kind of sit on it for a little while. And again, not just, I don't mean just sit on it. I mean, I meditate on it. I chew on it. You know, it may be a month while I'm in three verses. I want to know what God's saying. So then I do as much studying out of that cross-reference, out of the, all the different tools that I have available for me to go through it. And I may call somebody. Now, I'm going to throw Brother Giles in. I didn't know you were going to be in here tonight. I figured you were in a class. But Brother Giles is like, he's got, I don't even know what to call it, but 
he's got some resources that I just love, where he's taken the time to categorize different things. And uh, so you're looking at a spiritual battle. Well, he's like pretty much dissected the whole Bible and got every verse in there. And so I, I may use a tool that Brother Giles has allowed me to, to jump on through his Dropbox, or I may call Pastor Outler, I may call Pastor Kingsbury and say, hey, what? I'm, I'm not quite understanding what this means. I may talk to Brother Aiken. He, he's probably who I talk to more than anybody. But what I do is I communicate with other believers that know a little bit more than I do. I start asking some questions. I start going through some different um, uh, concordances and, and uh, different books just that somebody may know a little bit more. Now, be careful when it comes to grabbing a book of man's wisdom. Um, any study book along them lines I've ever used, I've always called somebody that knows more. And I'll get them cleared through Pastor Outler because he knows the author. And I, you don't want to you don't want to get a, a wolf in there and not even know it. Start learning some false uh, doctrine and not even realize it because uh, of our own ignorance in some of the areas of the scriptures. There's people that have came through and done much, much more. So it's important. That's why God's given us pastors. You know, Pastor Kingsbury would love to get a phone call that says, hey, I don't understand this. Can you explain it? You know, I, you know he just would. And so utilize that area. But don't, don't just flip-flop. Stay true to the study. It's like, you know, uh, I took a class from Mr. Seeley last year just called Study Skills. Or maybe it was year before last now, where he showed me that, you know, to learn. I was taking a history class from him. To really learn what Chapter 3 of the history book was, I had to stay in Chapter 3. I wasn't going to learn chapter 3 by reading chapter 5. And I also wasn't going to learn chapter 3 by reading the five questions at the end of the book. He said, Don, you have to read it. You have to highlight some things. You have to go back and reread it. You have to go back and reread it. And then he gave me some tools on how to memorize things and some areas with you know, some 3 by 5 cards and this sort of thing. But there is some study skills that you can learn to help you through the Word of God. And I would encourage you, to, if you, if you do struggle with that, I, I don't know if they could still jump into a class there on that, Mr. Seeley, or not, but I, I think he's teaching a class right now, if memory serves me right, on study skills as it sits right now. And uh, go through some of that, and it'll help you out. But just remember this, that God knows who you are. God knows where you are. God knows your struggle. God knows his word. So we don't need to manipulate his word. Take the time to study it as he's written it. Now, when it comes to a topical study, that may be a whole different ball of wax. You know, God wants to talk, you want to learn about Israel. Well, you're not necessarily just going to study Matthew to learn about Israel. You know what I mean? You're going to have to get into it and find out. I like to read every verse that has the word Israel in it to start with. I like to go to what they call, you know, first mentions. When was the first time this was mentioned in the Bible? When was the last time it was mentioned in the Bible? I like to do that quite a bit and go through and start from there. And then what happens and what happens and what happens and go from there. But then you might need to get some history, or history books. You may, there's so many different resources that we can use to help us understand the Word of God. Because ultimately, if we're not building a relationship, asking God to reveal His Son, Jesus Christ, to us, if we're not yielded to the Holy Spirit, who is the Master Teacher, as He is allowing us to go through and, and to gain the information, then again, it's just off our own intellect. I don't know about you, but some of you that have been in this church a long time, I guarantee you that you've had people come up to you that, I just don't understand this. But to you, it's plain as the day is long. Well, why is it so plain to you and it's not revealed to them yet? Because you've continued. They've built that relationship with the Lord. The Holy Spirit has, a, has given them that illumination to the Scriptures. But again, it starts with study two. Study two. Study two. I want to be approved of God. I want you to be approved of God. In uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 12, 12, it says, And further, by these, my son, uh, be admonished, 
and making, uh, uh, making many books, there is uh, no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. You know, so in that much study, there is a weariness of the flesh. But that's where we just need to continue, beloved. Just continue, continue, continue. It doesn't matter if you go to change your brakes and some rod and it's busted. I say that, that story off the get-go to say this. What if I would have just left that rod busted? I changed the brakes, left that rod busted, put my wife in the car, driving down the road. Jeremiah said, if that would have fully went, your tire would have went. So I'm driving down the road. I fixed the brakes. I fixed what I wanted to fix, but I didn't fix what needed to be fixed. Man. 70 miles an hour down I-90 and that car busts like that, that car tackles over and I kill my wife. What does it have to do with anything? It's the same thing spiritually. Sometimes we see what we want to see and we fix what we want to fix. Then God reveals something else to us. If we don't study and take the time to do it, we could really hurt ourselves and our loved ones. We just could, I mean, to the point of death. I didn't want to continue to go to O'Reilly's today. I just didn't. I didn't want to spend the money. I didn't want to spend the time. I didn't want to have to call Pastor Outler last night when I first seen it happen. Hey, Pastor Outler, uh, changing my brakes, and I see something in my car, and it's busted. Can I have a half a day off so that I can fix it? Man, I didn't want to do that. But there's just certain things that even if you don't want to do it, you need to continue. You need to continue. And sometimes you need to ask for help. If it wasn't for Jeremiah, I'd still be underneath that car. I didn't know how to do it. I could have watched all the YouTube videos in the world. And that's what I would have tried to do. And, you know, I probably would have killed somebody because the car would have broke anyways because it wasn't done right. And so it's imperative when it comes to your spiritual walk, when it comes to the issues that you're facing and you're studying the Word of God, that you go to a mechanic. You know, first you need God. But maybe you, you might need a Brother Seeley's uh, study skills. Maybe you might need to set up an appointment with Pastor Owler. Maybe you might need to call Pastor Kingsbury. Maybe you might need to go out on visitation with Pastor Hayes. You know, all these, I mean, but we don't want to. And not that you don't want to. I wanted to fix my car. I didn't want to shell out the money. And that could be the embarrassment when it comes to the spiritual issues. That could be the pride that's keeping us from getting it done. It could be all the things, I'm a man and I can take care of it. All the things that hinder us from going to the men of God in our lives. Man, it could kill you. It can kill you. I mean that literally. There's just... I've seen too many people literally be put underground because they were unwilling to go seek the help that they need. They were willing to fix the things that they wanted to fix. They were going to do the breaks, but they were unwilling to fix what was really broken. You know, my brake pads weren't the problem. Jeremiah said, yeah, the, the back ones, it's rubbed out, but it wasn't, the brakes weren't bad because they just wore. I had some pins that were in my caliper that weren't working. They are seized up. And that caused the back to wear right out. I wouldn't have known that. Even if it was just the brakes, I would have just put new pads on. It would have been a Band-Aid. And what, three months probably would have been bad again because of that issue? Don't assume that you know how to do it. Don't assume that you know how to get things fixed. As we're studying too, Ask a teacher. Get the help that you need. 
Because we all struggle. Everybody in here has got some sort of something or another going on. And it's real, and it's huge, and it's a major issue to you. Study the Word of God so that you can build that relationship with Jesus Christ. Seek those that know the Word of God so that they can help you build that relationship with Jesus Christ. Because once you know the truth, but there is that stipulation. He said to those Jews which believe in him, if ye continue in my word, then ye shall know the truth. Then the truth will make you free. Don't sideline yourselves. Don't stop. Don't be embarrassed. I guarantee you there's nothing that you could say to Pastor Kingsbury that somebody hasn't said to him before. I guarantee you he loves you. He wouldn't do what he does if he didn't. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you something that I thought was a very small thing that just made Preacher's Day. Small thing. I got a phone call from a, a director. And he said, hey, we watched a, a video of you in our chapter the other night. And we would like you to come out and teach our annual, yearly, whatever, are you banquet that they have at their church. Well, I was blessed by it. And I, yeah, I'd love to. But, I, you know, I said, I got I to gotta see first. So I called Pastor Kingsbury. And I said, preacher, do you mind if I go out to this church and to preach? And I never, I mean, it just, boom, a ball of light come on. And he was just rejoicing. It wasn't the fact that I got necessarily asked to preach. He just appreciated the fact that I called him and asked him. That I called and said, preacher, can I have your permission to go to this church and preach? It brought him so much joy. I didn't understand that. I just, you know, doing what we're supposed to do. But he, was, he loved taking that phone call. If he loved taking it from me, he'd love taking it from you. He wants you all to grow in the Lord. He wants you all to have an intimate, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He wants you to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And he'll do whatever he can do to help you achieve it. And so would the rest of our pastoral staff. But you have to study too. Study to make them phone calls. Study to do the things that aren't necessarily easy in life. Swallow that pride. Allow the Lord to take it away. Eat some of that humble pie. And get some help. One of the principles at RU is this. Our sinful habits do hurt those that follow us. And so no matter how much you think it's not that big of a deal, if you're married, ask your spouse how big of a deal it is. Find somebody that knows you and loves you and ask them how big of a deal it is. They'll be honest with you. You have to get honest with yourself. Then you have to get honest with the Almighty God. But that stuff doesn't come naturally. You have to study to learn to do these things. So take the time to study the Word of God. Take the time to get to know Him. Take the time to know His Word so that when these issues do come up in life, you've already studied too, and it's just second nature. It's just second nature. 